Hello and welcome back to Down the Scope. Today we're getting our teeth into the histology of teeth, starting with the structure of a mature tooth before moving on to tooth development. First off, let's get our bearings with the basic anatomy. Each tooth has two main parts, the crown, which is the portion that projects into your mouth, and the root, which is hidden below the gum line and is anchored into the mandible or maxilla. The area where they meet is called the neck of the tooth. Now let's look at the tissues that make up the tooth, starting from the outside in. Covering the crown is a layer of enamel, a translucent substance that is the hardest and most dense tissue in the entire body. It's highly mineralized, made of parallel enamel rods or prisms. Because it's so mineralized, it's completely acellular, meaning it contains no living cells. This is why if you chip your enamel, your body can't grow it back. Beneath the enamel is the dentin, which forms the bulk of the tooth in both the crown and the root. It's a calcified tissue that's harder than bone, but softer than enamel. Radiating through the dentin are thousands of microscopic channels called dentin tubules, each containing a little cytoplasmic extension from an odontoblast. This extension is called an odontoblastic process. Odontoblasts are the cells that make up and maintain the dentin. You can find them as a layer of columnar cells demarcating the pulp cavity and the dentin. After tooth formation, the odontoblasts continue to produce dentin. However, this type of dentin is less organized and is called secondary dentin. You can see the uncalcified dentin matrix as a thin, pale area just above the odontoblasts. You can even see the little cytoplasmic processes that the odontoblasts are sending off into the overlying dentin. Telling apart enamel from dentin is very difficult on standard stains. In this image, you can see how the surface of the tooth is covered by a much more basophilic layer without any dentin tubules. This is the enamel. You can see how thin it is compared to the underlying dentin. Below the gum, the root of the tooth also has a layer of dentin. But rather than enamel, this is covered by a layer of cementum. Here you can see the cementum beginning just at the gum line. Cementum is very similar to bone. Cementocytes, like these cells, produce cementum, which is then calcified. As we head towards the root apex, the cementum becomes thicker, eventually becoming irregular with lots of cementocytes trapped in the matrix in lacunae. The main role of cementum is to provide an attachment point for the fibers that hold the tooth in its socket. Underneath all these layers of hard tissue, at the center of the root and the crown, there is the dental pulp. The pulp fills a central space called the pulp chamber in the crown, and it extends down into the root canal. It's a delicate, soft, connective tissue resembling primitive mesenchyme, packed with stellate fibroblasts, blood vessels, and lots of sensory nerve fibers. Blood vessels and nerves enter and exit the tooth through a little opening at the very tip of the root, called the apical foramen. A tooth isn't really much use if it doesn't stay in the jaw so there's plenty of tissue to fix the tooth firmly in place. This collection of tissues is known as the periodontium. This starts with the gingiva, or gum, which forms a protective cuff around the neck of the tooth. The little potential space between the tooth enamel and this cuff is called the gingival crevice. The tooth root sits in a bony socket in the jaw known as the alveolus. Connecting the cementum on the root to the bone of the alveolus is the periodontal ligament or periodontal membrane. Its dense collagen fibers, known as Sharpie's fibers, run obliquely from the bone to the cementum. This fibrous layer is not rigid, but acts like a sling, permitting small movements of the tooth within the alveolus, so cushioning the tissues from the forces of chewing. You can also appreciate how vascular the periodontal ligament is. The attachments of Sharpie's fibers to both the cementum and alveolar bone are constantly being remodeled and reorganized to accommodate changing stresses on the teeth. So usually you'll be able to find some large osteoclasts eating away at existing bone, while osteoblasts make new bone elsewhere. So how does all this form? The development of a tooth, or odontogenesis, is the result of coordination between two embryonic tissues, the epithelium, which is ectodermal, and the underlying mesenchyme, which is mesodermal. The enamel comes from the epithelium, while pretty much everything else, the dentin, cementum, pulp, and the periodontal ligament, comes from the mesenchyme. 
To examine this process, we're going to look at a section of piglet's jaw and mouse jaw. The first stage of development is the formation of a horseshoe-shaped ridge of epithelium, the dental lamina, which pushes down into the underlying mesenchyme and forms a cap over a condensed ball of mesenchymal cells. At this cap stage, we can identify three key parts, the epithelial cap, which will become the enamel organ, the ball of mesenchyme inside, which is the dental papilla, and will form dentin and pulp, and the mesenchyme surrounding it is the dental follicle, which will form the periodontium. As development continues, the cap deepens into a bell shape. This is where the cells really begin to specialise. This is a developing mouse embryo. You can see the head with the nasal cavity, brain and tongue. There are developing teeth visible too. If we zoom in on them, we can see that the enamel organ differentiates into four distinct layers. The inner layer of cells differentiate into ameloblasts, the cells that make enamel. Just above that, there are a few layers of flattened cells called the stratum intermedium, which support the ameloblasts. Above these, there is the stellate reticulum, formed of large star-shaped cells that form the bulk of the enamel organ, creating a protective jelly-like cushion. Finally, there is the external enamel epithelium, a cuboidal cell layer at the very outside. If we look at this section of pig tooth developing, you can see the same layers again, but the stellate reticulum is better developed. You can just make out the dental lamina, the epithelial cells that push downwards into the mesenchyme to make the enamel organ. The cells of the dental papilla next to the ameloblasts are induced to differentiate into odontoblasts, the cells that make dentin. The odontoblasts then lay down the very first layer of dentin matrix. This stimulates the ameloblasts to start making enamel. As the odontoblasts make dentin and move inwards towards the pulp, they leave behind cytoplasmic extensions in dentin tubules. The ameloblasts secreting enamel move outwards. So the oldest tissues in a tooth are located at the junction between the enamel and the dentin. In this mouse fetus, we can see some teeth that are further along in development. You can see the ameloblasts producing enamel, a layer of dentin, and then the odontoblasts underneath. Once the crown is complete, the edge of the enamel organ continues to grow down, forming the epithelial sheath of Hertwig. This sheath maps out the shape of the root by inducing odontoblasts to form the root dentin. After its job is done, the sheath breaks down, but small clusters of its cells can remain in the periodontal ligament for life. These are known as the epithelial rests of malathies. You can often spot them as little clusters of epithelial cells within the periodontal ligament. With the sheath gone, cells from the dental follicle surrounding the tooth move in, become cementocytes, and lay down cementum on the root surface, completing the tooth. In this developing tooth from a piglet's jaw, you can see the ameloblasts that were producing enamel, which I think has fallen off the slide. Below that, there is the beginning of the cementum deposition in a thin layer over the dentin. On the other side, the enamel has been preserved, and you can see the ameloblasts laying down this prism-shaped mineralized material, which contrasts very nicely with the dentin underneath, interrupted by the dentin tubules. So there you have it. From a simple epithelial bud to a complex multi-layered structure, the tooth is an excellent example of developmental biology. That's all for now. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment underneath and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.